on the screen, you can see Betty Graytop and Sam Morgan, and they're going to be this going to be kind of a insightful and fun um, kind of a coaching session. And also too, and I'll mention this again, kind of at the towards the end, um, you'll receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours, and that'll come from Skyler. Um, and also too, I want to remind you, coming up in just a couple of weeks is the TWI Summit and Kata Summit. And we look Yahoo! forward to seeing um, you folks there. Um, also, too, um, I think Sam, are you? you you're the, you're coming too, aren't you? Or uh, no, I won't oh, okay. be. But I will be there in spirit for be sure. In, in, in Betty, through Betty, I will through be Betty. There. <laughs> Betty will be there, and Betty will be, I will be the host of Katacon Ten. Certainly, join in on that um, and all that. So it looks like people have kind of came in. So. We'll get going. So uh, Sam and Betty, I'll hand it over to you. Awesome. Well, thanks, uh, Jim. It's always uh, it's always fun uh, working with the Lean Frontiers folks. If you've ever come to a webinar here or gone to any of the summits, you know how much effort Amanda, um, Jim, and Skyler put into these events to make it all about you. You know, we talk about uh, value to the customer and voice of the customer, and I. I really know that they do everything they can to do that. And so that's the hope here for us as well, for Betty and I, that this session, of course, we're going to have fun doing some some coaching here. But ideally, it's to bring you value, that you, as you kind of see this coaching, that you'll learn. We're going to be open and transparent as we come to the very end of this coaching session. Betty and I are going to kind of pull the curtain back and go, okay, what were you thinking there? When you answered this question, Betty, what were you thinking? So that you can kind of get that feel, because I feel like often when we talk about coaching, we talk about theory and like we should do this and we do that. We have our coaching cards. We got the practice guy. We got all these things. But how does it actually work its way out? And when you stumble over yourself, do you come back around <laughs> and reflect and do you learn from it? Because that's the whole idea of kata, right? We have an experiment. We have a hypothesis. And we actually say what actually happened and we have to learn. And sometimes that may not be the funnest, but that's what helps us grow. So we need your help to do that. So if you have a question and wonder why, Sam, did you ask that question? Or Betty, what were you thinking when you answered that? Or were you scared of this? Or did you want to punch Sam in the face? All those are great. <laughs> so please drop those in. I know Jim will be monitoring the questions so he can cue those up when we come back. So we've left, we'll leave probably 15, 20 minutes for those questions. So please do drop those in. That'll make it fun, really, for Betty and I as we uh, do this thing. So Betty, I am so happy to be here with you. Like, this is super fun. This is awesome. I'm thank you for having me and thanks for asking. Yeah, well, thanks for being open. I think the um you know, as you, you you all may or may not know, I do these kind of lean coaching uh for lean coaches sessions on LinkedIn and it always amazes me when lean coaches get on there and they share like openly about their challenges in front of there's a billion users on LinkedIn. Not that I have a billion people coming to the sessions, but putting yourself out there is scary whether it's one person or a billion. So thank you so much for opening yourself up as well to, to this um, opportunity. Fantastic. Where do, would you like to begin, Sam? Well, that's, that's the question, really. I think in, in coaching, one of my favorite um, questions is, is like, what do you need today? So what do you need today um, right now? Today, right now. All right. Well, today, right now, what's on my mind is um, we are trying to build scientific thinking into more of our existing daily routines. Um, in some instances, that seems to be a really nice fit. Uh, in other instances, we struggle with the, uh, the, the cadence of daily. We struggle with the cadence of tracking data rigorously and uh, we let things get in our way. <laughs> other than that. <laughs> other, other than that, other than being human, Betty, then what else do we have here? <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, and I wasn't quite sure should the problem come from the coach's perspective or from a learner's perspective. So you just got what was on the top of my mind. Well, it's from a human perspective because we're yeah, human, right? In the end, you know, and what what's the... I guess, what are you thinking it should look like? Oh, right. Um, starting out with what I would like like it to be. 
is so we we recently so let me give you a little bit of, of background and context so maybe some of this will make sense uh when we came out of the pandemic at uh where i work uh it was really obvious the impacts that um not having training or, or all the things that we all experienced during pandemic had an effect on our systems and our processes okay so it was a bit of an awakening there was a bit of a critical break in our um production line and since then we've been trying to get back uh to some of the things that we know work training daily cadence coaching cycles um, etc so with that context we have four improvement coaches who have four new learners who have been deployed into four new stations which raised their hands last holiday and said, hey, would you please pay some attention to me because things are not, <laughs> things are not as they should be in this area. Um, and now we're to the point where all four of these groups, teams are trying to get their daily cadence going while I'm trying to triangulate the summary of their daily cadence. So that's and everything that comes with that. So I love the word awakening. I think that says something about where you all want to be and where you all are now. Because awakening in my mind is like, oh, now we're aware of things aren't as we want them to be. Because um, we can, you know, uh, stick our head in the sands, you know, like an ostrich and not um, awaken ourselves to what's going on. So what is it that... Um, you want it to be, if you're like, damn, this is not the way we want it to be. Well, what, what do you want it to be? It's almost, so I don't, I don't expect that it's going to be a trim and neat program that you wind <laughs> up and it goes. So that's not my expectation. Um, so somewhere short of that and where we are right now, which is, um, we're struggling. So it's two levels. We have coaches and new learners struggling. And then myself mm. as the, as the overarching coach of those four groups is struggling. So it's two circles, but it's the same things. Mm. It's like metrics might not match. Daily cadence is askew. I'm not quite sure this step really relates to what we're trying to get to. The yeah. added, the added, and actually this might be the bigger problem now that I think about it, is the fact that we deployed new learners and new coaches into areas that needed uh, more immediate attention than we're likely to get from the people that we have put there right now through no ill intention of their own of course yeah. um, just the natural pace of learning is not is in opposition to how fast we would like the work um, or how fast we need the work to happen in order to be ready for our next game day next holiday um, so that was a lot <laughs> yeah, what's what's about telling that. you? No, it's okay. I guess I'm still wanting to make sure, like, do you know what it would look like if it was like right, obviously, neat and trim. I get that, right? Like that, like there, I think we have this idealized version of all this beautiful stuff that all our favorite kata folks talk about. Like we mm -hmm. have these beautiful coaching cycles and the storyboards updated and pristine, and we have run charts and the obstacle park and all those things, right? I, I, what would be what would be awesome in your world with all of these things that are going on? Like if you were walking around Zemo in these areas, what would you be seeing that'd be like, yeah? Um. Well, I think some of the things that we're seeing are good. So, so coaching cycles are happening. I would say each group is probably they're hitting three cycles out of five a week. Okay. Is probably where our, our current condition is. Um, we lost one learner all together through a staffing thing. So now we have three groups running. Um, so in the three groups, daily set, daily coaching is happening, but the work itself, the work that, that the processes need isn't happening as quickly as we need it to happen. The outcome metrics are not improving at a rate, which will tell us that we're going to be okay for next Christmas. Okay. So how does that feel like? Like, how would you know that it is working like it needs to for next Christmas? 
the metrics would be showing me that the steps that we were take or the the would be showing me that the steps that we're taking and and the speed that we're able to move uh, would be scaling such that by next year we would or by next fall we would be in a better spot. Got it. All right. So you are seeing you are seeing how things are going. Like you do have insight into it. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. More, I think the concern is that we've deployed new learners into areas yeah. that are hot. And maybe it's okay. Maybe it's this is a situation where it's okay to take a step back and re um um reevaluate the steps that we took up until this point. No, this may sound like a stupid question because it may feel like mm -mm. you've already answered it. So bear yeah. with me. Sure, sure. What so I heard you when you said, you know it you've got like uh these areas are hot right now because you're needing to get things ramped up for the holidays mm -hmm. what's making you feel like i know you have you have the visibility mm -hmm. what else is telling you that this isn't on like it's not going well i guess that these people are you know is in over their heads um some of it is just maybe perhaps past knowledge as a coach that when you put a new learner into an area, you, we should not have made this mistake before. It's pretty, <laughs> it's really impressive actually that I usually, <laughs> I usually only do it with the coaches and now I've done it with a group of new learners where I assign. Yeah. Anyhow, it's disproportionate challenge with what mm -hmm. the team is oh, able to do. Got it. Um, I've done it so many times where it, when I'm trying to teach somebody, I want the focus to be on getting the work done. Or yep. I try to do the twofer, right? I want to teach somebody while getting great work done at the same yes. time. Yes. <laughs> and it doesn't work. And I know it. And I did it at a whole new level. <laughs> well, so. congratulations. congratulations. We're, all going to give you a, we're all going to give you an applause here for that <laughs> achievement in the in the comments. We can all congratulate Betty for, for doing it. And we can all we can all pat ourselves on the back because we've all done that as like lean folk. Yeah. I, I've done it in my own challenges. Like I want to learn this pattern. And I did this actually with my first challenge with Julie Simmons, if y'all are familiar with Julie. Yeah, she was my first kata coach. And I was like learning and raring to go, okay, I'm like, I'm going to take on this challenge. It was literally this new business um, onboarding process that was all up at our work and like cross-functional across like six teams. And it was like, um, you know, even Julie said at the beginning, like, what are you doing? Like, basically, yeah. we're going to do this because she was experienced and she could handle walk me through it. But at the same time, looking back, it's like I was trying to accomplish something meaningful and get make progress while learning the skill. <laughs> exact, exactly that, yeah that comes back to yeah. like what um what does mark rosenthal often say make the blast radius small right Ex yes yes <laughs> sometimes we have to have the bomb go off and so us to get injured yeah 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 so anyway so i guess i i have um thank you for helping me actually articulate the problem because where i started was not where i ended up I thought it was about tracking the standard work and in, in my I'm picturing the orange book in my head where they have the cascading yeah. patterns that the summary and that's all well and good and I understand the mechanics of that and we're kind of on our way to that but I was so focused on that that I didn't really see the bigger problem mm. which is that the challenge may be outsized for the experience and or time that we have in order to get the work done. And what, what do you feel is behind that? Behind us, uh, which part? Yeah. So you said yeah. you've got this disproportionate challenge. You're trying to teach yeah, yeah. and achieve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you feel like that? keeps happening or this happened <laughs> now why is this a consistent thing that keeps coming up 
Um, I think it has to do with being a manager for many, many, many years in a warehouse. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, because I, yeah. I, I start out saying I'm not going to do it. And it, it seems to continue to happen, which is quite, like I said earlier, quite phenomenal. Um, <laughs> and because I don't have a coach here on site. So necessary. Yeah. I mean, that's not entirely true, but I don't have a, yeah, that is actually true. <laughs> can I, can I, can yeah. I challenge something sure. in that, in what you just said? Yeah. Um, because it sounds like you've already got the solution to the problem. Mm, Here's my problem. Nice. The solution is if I get a coach, that's going to solve all this problem. Right. So when you, you said it goes back to being a manager can you say more about that and what you mean by being a manager? I think we have an idea, but I want to hear, I would love to hear from you what it means for you. Oh, uh, I mean, sure. There's a manager wears many hats. One of them is certainly training and developing people. That's my favorite, favorite arena to work in. There is also the commitment to the business, which is being a good tenant of the efficiency metrics yep. and the financial obligations and all of that thing, all of that stuff. So sometimes those are at, those are at odds, right? Mm. So, uh, and that's where the, can we get two things done at one time? I'm going to develop this person because I believe in them and I believe in this work. Um, and hey, why don't I try to do it here while I have to get this thing done at the same time? So that's kind of where it comes from. Yeah. Why do you, again, you can slap me up top of the head and, you know, um, why do you feel the need to have to do both at the same time? Um, I don't know. And I, but I do think that that's where if I had, if I wasn't, sometimes I work in a bit of a vacuum when I'm assigning this work. And if I'd had a coach, somebody might've been able to tap me on the shoulder and say, Hey, you're doing it again. <laughs> hey, that thing you said you don't want to do, you're doing it again. So it yeah. may not solve all the other problems that come with it, but it might at least help with the ones that I repetitively know that I make. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, you said, I don't know why. And that always flags for me the yeah. threshold of knowledge, right? Like, yeah. So... Um, it's a little bit how I'm built. It's a little bit of, you know, I'm pretty driven to get things done. I I especially like it when a team can reach a challenge, a tough challenge together that they didn't yeah. think that they could get to. So a little bit is, is, you know, when I overstretch people, it's not all just about wanting to get stuff done. It's also about wanting to help those folks stretch and have that same feeling of, oh, my God, I didn't know I could do that. And, you know, what a cool thing. So. Being a part of that is amazing. Seeing people achieve something they didn't think was possible. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and I can, I know your heart just from the short time we've gotten to know, you've got a big one. So I trust that that's true, right? You want to help people achieve something awesome. With that, <clears throat> I don't know why piece. What is something, what's an experiment you can go try to figure that I don't know why out for for the wanting to get two things done at one time yeah you said you don't know why you do that or why that is mm -hmm. Yeah, not not really sure on that one. Mm, An experiment okay. to run that would help me more understand my desire to teach. And I like the way you said it. You said teach and achieve, teach yeah. and achieve at the same time. Well, I guess maybe because is that I guess what I'm getting at is that serving you well that. 
that teaching and achieving and no. how, how oh. you've been doing it, is that serving you well? No, it's not. And nor is it serving the, the coach nor the learner well either. More importantly. So if we're, if we're thinking area. about that and we're yeah. working backwards, mm -hmm. we want to understand, okay, why, then why am I driven to that? Mm -hmm. So, and if we understand that, then maybe there is a, something we can do to, to work with that because if it's not turning out well for folks, then we want to do something different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, um, yeah, that, that, that helps resonate. That's a, a bit different than what I heard the first time, which is cool. Sure. Um, I think one of the things that we're, we're, we have been chatting about trying because I've been talking about this outside of, uh, outside of this too, a bit. Uh, is so we have these four improvement coaches. So we're going to tag team those guys up as a coach and a learner and okay. put, put them in the hot areas that I was speaking of. Okay. Okay. Um, to see how quickly we can move when we have, so it'll be two improvement coaches who have, who have played learner and coach um, times before uh, to see if we can get traction on the work itself. The question that remains now is how do we gently and or respectfully both um, and re like reassign these folks who who went on this training marathon to get ready to have this learning experience in this yeah. new area that they were just assigned. They've been in there maybe, uh, I guess it was the first of February, since February. And now we may want to redirect. So what's the experiment that you want to go do or will go do? I am going to, um, we are, well, the first thing uh, I would like to do is, um, well, we're going to pair up the coaches with the, as a learner, as a learning group and redeploy them into the areas. So that was one. That will help us measure the speed at which we're able to go, and we'll be able to see what our metrics are doing. We can see what our metrics are doing right now. They're just not going in the right direction quick enough. With the pairing up coaches and redeploying them, mm -hmm. is there a... Like if in between, like let's say the next day, right? What's mm -hmm. what's what's the step you can take just to kind of break it down, like as if we were in kind of a kata cycle? What's the what's the step you would take to to do that? Oh sure, sure. There's a couple uh, in there. Um, one thing we, we need to go talk to our the learners who are currently assigned, um, and figure out where, and have that conversation uh, of how, where where their work is going to continue. So their training path will continue. It's just going to be a redirect. It may not be in the area that they're in now. So that's the first thing because we want to make sure that the people are taken care of first before we mm. go out there and start moving too quickly. Uh, we don't want new, we don't want, we don't want coach teams showing up in their area where these yeah. people have been working so hard. Yeah, so yeah. respect the people first. Let's get in there and, and make sure that those folks are taken care of. Um, then we will pair up the coaches. Um, that would be the second step. So-and-so is with so-and-so. Here's your yeah. challenge. Yeah. So in kata fashion, you know, mm -hmm. we want to run one experiment at a time. Obviously, I know in your mind you've got these things, but for mm -hmm. kind of the sake of um, – kind of the pattern and your next step you talked about going to the current learners mm -hmm. what does that look like what would you what's going to go on in that step specifically when you talk to the learners the current ones um It's going to be a conversation where I don't know what the outcome is going to be. So we are going to negotiate what is best for that learner. Uh, if they are tied to this area and have had, and, and want to stay there, I may figure out a way that that can happen. 
I'm not sure yet. So, so it may be on a case by case basis, what happens based on sure. that. Um, I do think that I'm probably overthinking that part and it's not as big of a deal as it is. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to ask them. They're going to be no. like, yeah, sure. No problem. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, I've spent all this setup time in my head, making sure they're going to be taken <laughs> care of, uh, but that's okay. <laughs> Whoever does uh, that. I don't know. Huh? Yeah, right. Who, whoever does that spends all the time in their head. I don't know anybody. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're going to be curious about where where they can go next, right? They just spent sure. they've been working since last fall actually taking courses, classes. Oh, um, nice. The wonderful Gemma Jones ran us through a bunch of, of simulations and a boot camp to get ready for this work. Love it. So, um Props I to Gemma. Did I answer your question? Um I think I just want want just love 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 to hear a little more detail sure. around you know where is it going to happen what time how long any other details that like are forming in your mind about how it would look. Mm -hmm. uh, well, currently the the coaching sessions are scheduled, so it'll happen at the end of one of the exit or probably at the beginning of the when we decide to, that we're going to do this. It'll happen at that coaching session so that their coach and myself and or their their second coach is present. To have that conversation. You said if we decide to do this. So is there a step <laughs> is there a step before the actual talk that needs to happen? Um, no, that's just loose language. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so have you decided to do this? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sometimes I slip back into the oh god, do, oh, do god, I really do have that. to? Do I really have to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we all do that slippery language. It's so easy. We all do it. I do that. I do that quite often at home, and it drives my wife crazy. The mm -hmm. if and the maybe and the possibly, and she's not a kind of coach by any means, but she will slap me upside the head and call my out. So, um, so when will this happen then? Oh, uh, well, today is Wednesday. It should be by the end of this week. Okay. Yeah. So, what day specifically? Just so it's in your mind, and you're like, this is the thing. Well, we have three groups to get to and three days okay. to get it done, basically. So okay. as we're able to slip in there, we'll. Cool. How do you, how do you expect um, it? How do you expect to feel like, what do you expect first? Like just period from this. Um, I expect that the conversations will go better than I, than I am thinking sitting right here because once I'm in the conversations, <laughs> they always do. Um, I have really great, well-intended folks out there. And yeah. Um, I expect that they might be excited and actually relieved okay. because the challenge that we gave them was too large. Mm. Uh, and the coaches are going to be relieved because they have, been feeling the pressure of the metrics not moving in the direction that we wanted them to in a fashion uh, in a or quick enough as we wanted them to. So they've been feeling that pressure. So I think overall, there's going to be relief um, quickly followed by the, wow, I have to set up a whole, it's like a new setup. It's, we're starting over again, for sure. And that's okay. I mean, the important part is that we restart, you know, keep going. Don't stop. How about Betty? How will she feel? Um, <laughs> I'm already laughing about the fact that I did it again in a whole new way. I just, it really is fascinating to continue to make the same mistake in different ways. Um, <laughs> I like, uh, as much as when I'm in it, sometimes I'm frustrated by the rigor of restarting and restarting and restarting. For Once sure. I'm in it, I surely enjoy it. And anytime I'm around the crew doing this work, um, I enjoy it. So I'm going to feel good about it. And what will, um, what do you expect to learn? Uh, I will learn. Uh, I'm going to learn more about sizing challenges uh, based on who the learner and the coach are. Mm. I'm going to do that based on where the people go next. Like I'm going to take another swing at trying to size something more reasonable, right? So I'm going to learn that. I'm also yep. going to learn if we put two experienced folks in an area, how quickly can we go? How much work can we get done? Um, you know, what's the difference in those two dynamics? And from that gap between those two groups, we'll learn something too. Like how can we, how can we um, 
what are the characteristics of these experienced people that are able to go in there and I'm hypothesizing and move at a faster rate. So that's great. And you didn't even solution in there. I was listening for it. You didn't do it. That was great. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I don't think. Usually I do, honestly. I mean, yeah, we all do. Maybe, so maybe somebody caught something there. I was, I, I always listen yeah. for the shoulds and we, we will do this or I can't do that. And, you know, you didn't do that. So congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> is there anything currently in your way of taking that step? No. No obstacles. Nope. Okay. No obstacles. Ah, time quick... is always an obstacle, but that's that's not a decent one. That's, that's... Not a decent <laughs> one. <laughs> well, how quickly can we go and see what you've learned from that step? Well, I hope by next Monday. And would you be willing to share out how that goes in some way, shape, or form with uh, uh, with with this with the yeah, folks sure. here that came here? Sure, um, sure. Maybe, uh, maybe we can just get a email out or um, whatnot. With we can arrange with Jim and Skyler to send that out on Monday of next week. How does that sound? That sounds great. Cool. Um, Jim, does that sound does that sound doable? Can we have uh, Betty share out her um, like how the step went and and what she what happened and what she learned? Sure. Yeah, we could probably do that. Okay. Cool. Well, I think um, that all of us are going to learn through this. So thank you so much for stepping into this and being willing to share. Because I think some of us who have experience in continuous improvement, we get so used to that achieving piece. And so when we're not, it's like, oh, you know, I know this for sure as a coach. Like, I don't want to show people that side because then what are they going to think of me? And then they're not going to trust me. They're not going to do business with me. They're not going to work with me. So for me, it goes deeper. Um, and so thank you so much for being vulnerable in this space. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning from you to just laugh at myself. That's one thing I often do not do is I take myself too seriously. And I love the way that you put it. It's phenomenal how I learned a new way to just do the same thing over and over again. <laughs> I think I, you gave me a new way to reframe when I, when I keep oh, struggling cool. with the same thing. Okay, just laugh at yourself. And um, that's what I'm I'm taking away. But I would really love to to hear um, maybe uh, Betty. What what was the most valuable part of that conversation for you? What I uh, what I find striking is what I start out by saying. So I mean I I've, I've done this a little bit, right? I've been practicing this stuff for a couple of years. Uh, and I start out with one thing, and I always end up somewhere different. I mean, <laughs> that is the real beauty of it. Yeah, and it's like I've learned to sort of be okay with that, right? So if I just put something in the water, yeah, and I have somebody that I can talk about or exper, you know, go through the experiment, whatever, uh, we end up somewhere better. Hmm. I love that putting something in the water, just doing something, and we end up somewhere better, isn't that? Yeah, crazy? I started out with daily cadence of standard work and ended up at disproportionately sized challenges and new learners. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not unusual that I start out in the mechanics of what's not working, and then it takes me several conversations to get up to that higher level of what the mm. real problem is. Yeah. Um, I, so that was course, helpful. If, yeah, if there's any questions, Jim, I don't know if there's any questions, or anybody has any questions about the, the session, um, would love to to cue those up if they are. What was um, helpful not, for you, Sam? What was helpful for me, having someone like yourself that was open and and vulnerable, like you, I didn't sense that you were, I mean, of course you had your moments where, you know, you did the slippery thing, which we all do, of course. And you, um, you could have had moments where you were just really like protective and squared off. Like I'm always, I'm, I'm, trying to grow my sense of sensing people's energy, their body language, their tone of voice, because that mm, is saying nice. something more. We know mm -hmm. that through all the studies that communication is whatever they say, 70, 80, 90, whatever statistic you want to believe, nonverbal. So it's funny that we just kind of listen to the words. We don't like a look. And I think, you know, in this virtual age, it can be even easier to like not do that. But I think just having somebody who, like yourself, who is just like so open, they don't take themselves too seriously and is present and was open. I think as a coach, cool. that's all you can ask for is somebody to be willing to step in and do the work. And that's when magic happens. Like you put the stuff in the water 
and something beautiful came up. There you go. Yeah. Jim. Yeah, uh, a couple. One is, get it. Do you have a KPI forecast that tells you what metrics your team needs to be hitting in order to be ready for next Christmas? Yes, we have, uh, we don't call them KPIs, but that's okay. We call them DOR. It's called the Department Operating Report. Uh, but we have a couple <laughs> key, key metrics, um, efficiency metrics, uh, quality metrics and such. Okay. And uh, actually, one more question is: Is there is there a good target for uh, for cadence? I think on the coaching Ooh. cycle side. Boy, I hate to say it, but as often as you can. I mean, <laughs> daily is is what we at Mail Order practiced many years not daily. Like seven years, we tried to do this in the fashion that people told us uh, was not correct. Uh, we still saw okay results, but it was really, 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 really hard. Um, mm -hmm. When I went to daily coaching three years ago or something like that, when I when I got um, tuned into the Cotter Girl Geeks, it it changed the it changed everything here. Mm -hmm. Daily, I can't say I can't. I know it's hard. I know it's it's tough to commit to. We strive for um, we strive for four a week. Four a week is what we strive for. And we end up with three. So if we strive for five, we'd end up with four. I'm sure of it. Uh, so yeah. I would, I would say for me too. So, and that's, and I think it's too, it's different too, as a, in an organization, as well as mm -hmm. like an individual person, oh, if you've sure. got like um, an individual challenge that you're working toward, you know, there can be differences with capacity or budget team. Like you might have like an organization, you might have, you know, more capacities you can put somebody else on the line while they're going out and doing a coach. It's those different things come into, I will say I used to be like my only thing that I did was daily and I wasn't going to move off that. And I found for me, this is just my, my practice is meeting the person where they're at, what the capacity they have and where they're at in their journey. Yes, of course. But I like all my clients to be be doing daily. Um, I'd say, yeah, probably. Because I think I know that the value in that at the same mm -hmm. time I'm meeting them where they're at with their their needs yeah. and what they have. So, and you can still um, help people think scientifically um, as long as you're doing it with intention. Of course, daily is yep. ideal. So. Yeah. And actually, it's all about the it's the daily is just about the short feedback loop. So that if yes. I if I go astray, somebody's reining me in before I get too I'm way out in left field. It takes me longer to get back, you know. So actually, another one came in. This one says it's for Betty. How do you know that a challenge is outsized? <laughs> How are you feeling about selecting the focus process? Um, let's see. Mm. We selected the focus processes based on our, um, performance last holiday. So that's how those were selected. Um, the outsized challenge and gosh, I like it when you ask questions like that, cause maybe I don't know. Um, so it's always good to explore that. Um, but there's a couple things that I do know, like when we move these folks, they, they, they not only started learning Kata for the first time, they, they learned a new, they learned a new area. So we moved them from their core competency where they'd been working and put them in a new work area. So they had a new area to learn. They had, and they're also the leader of the area. So they're the new leader in an area that they hadn't worked before, working on a new challenge trying to think a, in a new way that's not intuitive to us at all. So I think maybe that was what I meant by the outsized part. Um, and that, and I just know that it is a good rule that if I need to move, um, if you need to go fast in an area, it's not a place to put a new learner who's just learning this process, learning the starter kata. Because it's, it's we're, at that point, we have we have decided to go at the learner's pace for yep. the learner rather than the, the pace that the business requires of that area. 
Does that answer the question? I think so. I guess I'll have to see if they okay. respond with your question. Did that answer their question? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll just say that this this was a really, really good um, experience. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, this is the way that I like to to support folks, you know, in doing um, and this speaks to what we talked about earlier, the cadence. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely like the kata at heart, like the scientific thinking is at my core. And I'm so thankful to have learned this practice and this pattern because it is not how I just practice as a coach, but how I just live. You know, this is embedded in me and uh, is my operating system <laughs> uh, for good or for ill. And um, so I'm um, so some folks might have noticed like, OK, you're not asking the coaching questions like in the exact order. And I think for me, in my mind, I have I have them. I know them and I'm meeting the person where they're at with so I can dig deeper and understand and help them along. I don't know, Betty, how did that feel for you? I know you're, you're obviously an experienced coach, learner. How was that for you to not have it kind of in that same pattern as you were going? How did that, how was that experience? Oh, that, um, it was okay. That was, uh, it didn't, you asked the questions in a fashion that I was, I was, I felt like was appropriate. Um, I kind of knew where you were going based on what you were asking, just because I know the questions a little bit, and it's okay that you you were jogging around. Yeah. I don't know how it would be for somebody who was just learning. That might be difficult, you know. Well, actually, they'd be yeah. able to answer the question; they just wouldn't be able to see the pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that and that's it too. Also, yeah. just um, it depends on what your intention is, right? Are you trying to yeah. teach somebody the pattern? If that's the case, then the daily is something that you should be doing. If that's not the primary intention, then this, you can, I feel like, and you have somebody that's experienced as a coach and learner, then improvising, um, I, I would say, is is fine. Feels, and it felt, it felt like you were, you were walking along and, and it felt good. Yeah, that's good. Sure. That was a good experience. Yeah, thanks, Jim, for this opportunity. And I know, I mean, I'm excited to hear how Betty's time goes at Katacon. I know she's going to kick ass and take names, and there's you just all, oh. it's going to be like a party there. You're going to have the <laughs> um, the uh, the eclipse ride and all that stuff. So it's going to be it's going to be a blast. And literally, and Jim's a party, party animal too. He's yeah, going to um, you're going to be celebrating. Hopefully, Purdue winning uh the championship, right? Yeah, well, possibly. I guess one game at a time. But it actually will be a party because <laughs> it's actually the Katacon ten, so it's the tenth birthday for uh, the Summit. So we'll be celebrating that. And also the 18th birthday for the TWI Summit, which will be running concurrently. So yeah. Wow, neither are technically legal to drink. That's something. Kata's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> mm. well, not even driving a car yet. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Well, good. Well, thank you both so much. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Betty, for presenting today and running yep. through this. Uh, a lot of fun, very insightful. Um, thank you, everyone, for participating in the webinar today. And like, as, as uh, Sam mentioned, don't forget to join us at the TWI Summit or Katacon 10 with Betty as the co-host. Um, so get on and register soon. And also, again, remember, you'll receive a link to view the recording of the webinar within uh, 24 to 48 hours. And I guess with that, Everyone have a great day and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.